Hello, welcome back to Sterling Armory for our Oak Shop Topology series. So, so far we've done uh, Type 15 and Type 18, and we were going to focus on Swords of Group 2. And uh, if you're not familiar with Group 1 and Group 2, what the Oak Shop Topology is in general, uh, I would say please go back to our first video of the series, which is Type 15, <laughs> as Swords Fall. Um, and we go through what each of those mean, what the topology is, uh, and we describe that in detail in the first episode. So we don't want to do that every episode. Um, so we're going to focus just on the individual ones, um, uh, individual types uh, of the topology. So today we were planning on, again, we were going to do all of group two first and then go back to group one later. But we have a great example of a sword from group one, uh, a type 12A. Um, and there's a whole story behind that uh, that I'll talk about in a second. But we have one now, so we wanted to talk about it, and we wanted to do the episode now. Um, and this particular piece, uh, this one and Type 18, we're filming back-to-back -back before we go to Combat Con. And uh, we don't do swords in Group 1 often. Um, so the fact that we have one here now, uh, I, we just wanted to highlight it. So uh, what is Type 12 in an Oak Shop topology? So... Type 12 is another one, just like type 18, where the, the definition of the type, especially the two-handed versions, change from, uh, from his first book, which is Sword in the Age of Chivalry, uh, to Records of the Medieval Time, which is his second book, and then is republishing his, and I forgot to mention this in the last video, Swords in the Age, Age of Chivalry just does have an updated print that comes out and has much more information, even more so uh, than records of the, of the medieval sword. So, um, and as I mentioned in the last two videos, uh, if you're, if you want to study the Oak Shop topology, uh, make sure to get his two books. So I don't think you can get the original print anymore, but the reprint, which I think was published in 97, uh, is a sword in the age of chivalry. Um, so this goes into the detail about the different types. There's a couple of examples of original pieces at the back. Um, but then the second book, The Records of the Medieval Sword, if you're interested in looking at uh, historical examples of each of the types, um, this is the, the book for that. But they're both uh, good to have, and they work off of each other. So real quick, so Type 12, originally there was no Type 12A, which is a two-handed version. So originally all the Type 12s were single-handed only. I don't have an example of one of those today, but... I'm going to go through the description in a second. Um, and then all of the two-handed versions were actually lumped into type 13, and type 13A is the two-handed version, which he calls the great swords or, or the original great swords. Um, so that has changed since then. But if we go back to his original um, uh, description of what a type 12 is, this kind of describes it pretty well. So remember everything in group 1, so type 10 to type 14, um, was a was popular during the times of mostly male armor, chainmail armor, uh, some plate, not but plate is not predominant yet. So these blades are designed to combat mostly male armor. And uh, his description is a broad, flat, evenly tapering blade. Uh, and the type 12 actually has a good sharp point, which is not common in, in other types than that. So type 10. Uh, 11 and 13 generally don't have good points. They're more rounded or spatulated tips. Uh, the fuller is well marked and occupies two thirds to three quarters of the blade length. Uh, and then all, it mostly starts uh, in the tang. And uh, for the normal type 12s, the grips are about four and a half inches long. And so that's his, just his general description of the type 12. Uh, what I didn't mention and what's not mentioned here is that all of type 12s are lenticular cross sections. So they're not the diamond cross section of the last two types you looked at that are later. Uh, it's it's more of a lozenge shape or uh, what, what they call lenticular cross section. Uh, so they're nice and curved if you look at the cross section top and bottom. Um, so yeah, that's a type 12. Now again, the, originally there was no type 12A, it didn't exist. <laughs> so so uh, type 12... Um, A's uh, were originally grouped in type 13, and type 13s are essentially uh, the same description. It's a wide, flat, lenticular cross-section blade with a fuller. 
Um, but type 13s stay pretty much the same width all the way down, and then they have a round, more rounded tip. So when when he went to uh, to publish his second book, uh, he added a new subcategory to type 12, and that's the example piece that we have here today. So type 12A, and I'll I'll just, uh, I'll just read right off the book here. Uh, so he says the swords illustrated um, below he wants put in the type 13A, which is what we just talked about. But it was his mistake. So he, again, he has no problem talking about mistakes, and it's it's a it's a categorization. It's a modern categorization too. None, none of these categories existed back then. <laughs> um, and so you know when you're looking at blade types, some of them are will they'll be questionable whether they're one way or the other. But there's small differences uh, that can make a distinction. Um, so what he says is. Um, you know, when he originally did the book, uh, he had no examples of what he would consider a 12A. So all of the great sword examples he had at that time were pretty long blades that were have pretty parallel edges. So before he wrote his second book, he came across a number of examples um, that are great swords, but that have tapering edges to a point, which is more what a type 12 is. So that's the big difference between a 12 and a 13. So a 12, the edges taper slightly. Not as much as a 15 or an 18, mind you, but they do taper slightly, and the point is smaller in width than the base of the blade. And then the Type 12 also has a point to it, whereas the Type 13s are parallel and then usually not much of a point. It's usually rounded off. So yeah, so so Type 12. Uh, here's the example we have here. Uh, so again, big two-hander this is the type 12a so the two-handed version uh so you have uh, a big lenticular cross-section blade starts a bit wider gently tapers down to a nice point here uh, at the tip and the fuller runs it's, it's a very well defined fuller uh and it runs uh two-thirds to uh wait three quarters to two-thirds that's the same number <laughs> uh i forgot the exact number that he describes but Somewhere be it's somewhere between two thirds and three quarters. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> it's been a long day uh, of the blade, which is what this particular one does. So uh, these great swords are very neat. Um, again, I don't make many often. Uh, they have much older style guards and pommels. Um, and a lot of people think that these blades are super heavy, but they're realistically not. This one's not sharpened yet, by the way, which is why I'm putting my hands on it. Um, so these swords usually start uh, you know, somewhat thick. Uh, some of these are actually quite thin at the base. Um, this one's a little under a quarter inch, and then they tapers all the way down to less than tenth of an inch in that last section there. So it's what makes the blade uh, somewhat lively for its size. Um, this particular blade, I believe, is 37 inches long, um, but yet it's still about three and a half pounds. So it's a pretty lively blade. Yeah, I can actually single hand this blade, no problem. Um, but you have that nice big two-handed grip that you can use as well. So that's a type 12, and uh, hopefully that helps you understand uh, the difference. So that, as I mentioned in the earlier videos, type 15s and type 18s get confused a lot. Uh, and then for the older swords, type 12s and 13s can get confused a lot, not necessarily in the single-handed varieties, but in the two-handed varieties, they do get confused a bit. So... Again, if you if you have any questions on, or if you're ever wondering if it's a 12 or a 13, just look at the, the the profile taper of the blade. If if it does taper, um, you know, I was going to say significantly, but I, I can't reuse that term. If it tapers really at all, it's generally a type 12, whereas a type 13 is pretty much parallel edges. Um, so yeah, that's a type 12. So I'm going to, uh, one thing I didn't mention in the last video, by the way, is um, for all of the Oakshot topology, and I mentioned it in the first video, um, a great resource is My Armory. So, and they're not a sponsor of us or anything, um, but we just love how they have the information presented. And if you go to My Armory, I'll have the link below. You can actually go through, uh, and I always forget what section of the website it is. Uh, I think it's called Featured Content. I think that's right. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but if you go to that section, you'll see a number of uh, Oakshot uh, links and the way they categorize everything and display uh, Oakshot topology. You can go through category by category. So 10, 11, 12, it's all written out for you. Uh, they have great pictures. They show historical examples. 
uh, and it's a great way to um, understand uh, the topology. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or check out that website or both. And uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, I don't know what the next video is because we already went out of order. So we've done 15, 18, 12. So who knows what the next one will be. Um, but uh, we will continue going in this video series. And hopefully you're liking this so far. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll catch you next time. And I always have a problem turning these off. <laughs>